Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Theory, the number one MMA DFS prep show in all of the land. Who is this gentleman, dude? Who am I? I am your host, Monk, a.k.a. The Monk Matician. That's your name, dude. And in this very episode, guys and girls, we're going to be breaking down all 13 fights, UFC Sao Paulo, this Saturday, November 4th, from a DFS perspective, help you build all those GPP and cash lineups and get you on your way to cashing those big tournaments. Before we get into it, be sure to hit the like on this video, hit the sub on the Monk Maddox channel as we are inching closer and closer to 600 subscribers, and hit the bell as well if you don't ever want to miss another game theory video. And guys, be sure to comment down below we are in sao paulo this week so i want to know who is your favorite brazilian fighter of all time any weight class male female doesn't matter i want to know who your favorite brazilian fighter is of all time let me know in the comments down below and be sure to stick around for the end of the video where i will give you the monk most owned no nonsense pick of the week and cm monks picks for ufc sao paulo without further ado let's get right into the fights i've got information man new shit has come to light and, and shit, man. Fight. First fight of the night, we've got Mark D. Casey, the bone crusher. He ain't never scared. Taking on Kawi Fernandez. First fight in the UFC for Fernandez. He has no Dana White contender series fights either, so I have no stats for him. His last five strength schedule is not great, but not the worst either at 67.06. It's decent for a newcomer. You want to see that about 68, 69. <laughs> <laughs> Over 70 would be great. Uh, meanwhile, Mark D. Casey, 8,600 this week. He is 7-7 seven seven in the UFC. Outpacing his opponents, 3.2 points a minute to 1.8. At distance, it's about even inside the distance is where he's been doing most of his good work, scoring almost 4.5 points a minute, allowing 1.6. Barely averaging triple digits at 100.85 points per win. Has a decent ceiling and floor. Good takedown accuracy, landing 3.5 takedowns per 15 minutes. Decent takedown defense, controls 72% of all grappling time he is involved in but he is $250 over his average salary has a decent average value per win at over 12 and an okay strength of schedule just a bit better than Kawe Fernandez here I'm gonna pick D Casey here I know Kawe is the uh the hot prospect and nobody is has faith in D Casey based on his last few performances and the fact that his knees are probably shot to shit like Kamaru Usman's are strong men also cry <clears throat> But if he's able to get some takedowns here on the UFC newcomer, I really think he can score a ton of points and possibly be a sneaky little pick at 8,600. Yes, he's the favorite, but I know a lot of people are at least saying that they are on his opponent, Fernandez, this week. So I'm picking D. Casey. I'm thinking if he can get you know any kind of takedowns, he should be able to win this fight, probably by decision. So yeah, I'm taking D. Casey. I don't really mind him in cash, but I'd be looking for other options uh, more guaranteed uh, than I would D. Casey here. Next fight, we've got Eduarda Moira taking on Montserrat Conejo Ruiz. 9,400 for Eduarda, 6,800 for the five foot tall Montserrat Ruiz. Not great numbers as far as pacing goes for Ruiz. She's getting outstruck everywhere at distance, inside the distance. In her one UFC win, she did score almost 103 points. She's, she lands two and a half takedowns per 15 minutes, 83% takedown accuracy, 60% control of all grappling time she's involved in. She's even a couple hundred dollars under her average salary of 7K. Great Great value when she did win at 14.5. Strength of schedule leaves a little bit to be desired, but compared to her opponent, it's fantastic. It's just going to be the height, the size difference overall, I think. You're entering a world of pain, Walter. Eduardo Mora, six inches taller than Ruiz, six inch reach advantage, and she finishes women, dude. Eight of her nine fights, she has finished professionally. Does have a Dana White Contender Series fight, and those are the stats that you are seeing on the screen. They pretty much have to be thrown out. She only fought for four minutes, but she was completely dominant. And if if you put DraftKings scoring to that Dana White Contender Series fight, Morrow would have scored 111.18 points and 5.3 per minute, allowing basically zero. She barely got scored on at all, controlled 100% of the grappling time. Terrible strength of schedule, terrible. Remember when I said you wanted it to be around 70? We're at 53.92 here for Mora. So while I do consider her a great cash option, I think she's going to uh, beat Ruiz, probably finish her early. That's what I'm hoping for anyways at the $9,400 price salary. If that doesn't happen, she's 
he's not going to pay off that salary and i would be a bit concerned putting too much of the very low level straw weights in my lineups for gpps i think this is a great fight i think the winner whether it's moira early or ruiz at all could score well enough to make the optimal lineup so get both of them in your lineup i'm definitely siding with eduarda here the newcomer we'll be picking her to win picking her in cash games as well and uh yeah that's just how i see this one going the size difference is just too great in my opinion Here we have another strawweight battle between Denise Gomes and Angela Hill. I like Gomes here. I mean, I know Hill is the is the veteran. She's got 18, no, 23 fights, excuse me, 23 UFC fights, which is insane, especially in this division. Uh, her numbers are not great. You can see all the red on the screen, getting outpaced basically everywhere. Her DraftKings points per win are far, far less than we need to make the optimal lineup at just 83. Takedown accuracy is just average. Bonus points per win is basically just decision points. Takedown defense is 76%, which is pretty good. She controls 40% of the grappling time she's involved in and has a very, very good strength of schedule, does Angela Hill. However, she is also more expensive than her average salary, which is always a big red flag here. It's not by much, less than 200 bucks, but still 200 bucks is 200 bucks, and that could come in handy when you're trying to get to the Jail Almeidas and the Bonfims of the world this week. Meanwhile, Denise Gomez, I mean, looks fantastic so far in her UFC career, did drop her first fight, her UFC de debut to Luma Lukbunmi, definitely not a good look there if you get completely dominated by uh, Luma look boomy there but she looked great against Bruno Brazil finished her in the second round and Yasmin Uregi I mean we all saw what happened there less than 30 second knockout scored 131 points basically in each of those last two fights and I like her this week against Hill I think she hits hard as hell hard as Hill <laughs> That's marvelous. The one thing everyone's saying here is Hill has never been finished. And yes, while I, I or not never been finished, but it, it's hard to finish her. Never been knocked out, has been subbed twice in the UFC. She got knocked down by Mackenzie Dern in her last fight, guys. Mackenzie Dern. I don't know what you know or don't know about Mackenzie Dern. She's a jujitsu girl. Am I wrong? No. Am I wrong? Yeah, but... Okay, then. She's not a striker, and she knocked down Angela Hill in her last fight. So give me Denise Gomez here, hoping she can land that shot. And if not, hoping she can at least hang, win a greasy decision against a very good and qualified UFC vet in Hill. 8,400, I think she has a potential to score very well, uh, Denise Gomez, if she gets an early finish here. So don't mind her in cash either for a mid-range play, and I really don't mind Angela Hill either. Uh, for GPPs, I don't know much about Hill for that. She just doesn't score well, even in a win as an underdog, I don't know that she's going to put up a ton of points good enough to make the optimal lineup at 7800. This one seems pretty straightforward in the light heavyweight division as far as DraftKings goes anyways. At 9K, we've got Vitor Petrino making his third walk for the UFC, taking on Modesto Bukowskis, 7,200 this week. Bukowskis is not a good DraftKings play, and by not a good DraftKings play, I mean he might be the worst one on the entire card historically. Doesn't score more than 1.6 points a minute anywhere at all. Gets outpaced everywhere. Less than 69 points per win, guys, and this is over three UFC wins. Laughable, man. <laughs> I would have. His last two, he put up 56 against Pauga and 71.7 against Tyson Pedro. He's not even coming close to 10. Did I say seven? I meant 51 points. I don't know what I said, but. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? 50 some points in each of his last two wins is wild. 8.38 average value per win is terrible. Yes, he is under his average salary by about $900. But I mean, what's he going to do here? And his last five strength of schedule is terrible at 65. So even if you think Bukowskis is going to win this fight, I would definitely be pro avoiding him in DraftKings, not playing him in cash, not playing much of him in GPPs. Obviously, I don't go 0% on anyone when it comes to GPPs, but I will be in the single digits when it comes to Bukowskis this week. As he takes on Vitor Petrino, as I mentioned, five points a minute overall, five points, almost six points a minute inside the distance, 110 points per win. He put up 103 against Prakniao and 116 against the pleasure man, Anton Turkali. Yeah, everybody's saying, oh, he, he took so long to finish Prakniao. We don't care about that for DraftKings. He still scored 103 points, and he was 9K that week. I don't know if he made the optimal lineup. I haven't checked on that one. Uh, I know he made it in his first fight, so probably not in his last fight. But uh, there's always the chance that he could put Modestus Bukowskis down. Bukowskis has been finished in four of his five UFC fights, and I love the numbers, like I said, from Petrino. Obviously, numbers aren't everything. Pair this show, use it as a supplement with your fight tape, and then you should start to make some money there. So I'm going Petrino and GBPs. 
I'm probably playing a little bit of him in cash, but I like other options. I'd rather pay up $100 and get Renat Fokhradinov uh, for 91, but I don't mind Petrino in cash. Don't mind for GPPs and Bukowskis. No cash there, maybe a little bit in GPPs, but as I said, awful, awful DraftKings performer. next fight we've got a bantamweight scrap daniel marcos taking on victor hugo victor hugo making his ufc debut does have a dana white contender series fight stats do not look good there you can look through them a lot of red not even two points a minute overall i mean con did control 60 percent of the grappling time he was involved in threw up a couple of submissions looks like two of them and has an okay strength of schedule at 67.49 but other than that nothing is standing out he would have scored only 84 points in that win against eduardo torres Cout. I'm not sure there about how to say that, but he did sub him in the second round. Only got 84 points in that finish win. That's that's wild. He looks like a fucking loser. Uh, let's see. Daniel Marcos looked okay so far. Simon Oliveira dominated him. Well, I mean, it looked pretty dominant, at least, according to the stats. Scored 104 points. Then had to fight Davy Grant, who is tough, scrappy, um, and very, very difficult to finish. Some may say almost impossible. And Marcos won the split decision there, scoring 54.79 points. I personally think Davy Grant won that fight, but it was extremely close, even if you take out the judges' scoring and you just look at the numbers. Very, very close fight there. But it was against Davy Grant, not a newcomer named Victor Hugo. I'm picking the uh, favorite here in Marcos. I just don't know how he's going to score. He's averaged 79 and a half points. Like I said, one was 55 and one was 104. So what are we going to get out of Marcos? I simply don't know. I don't know enough about Hugo. I got to do more tape on him before the weekend comes and I set my lineups. But basically, I'm going to avoid this fight in cash because I don't know what's going to happen. And I'll just play some of both sides and GPPs there. The strength of schedule for Marcos is terrible. Davy Grant only helped him and he's still at 64.73 so yeah like i said i'll just stick to this one for gpps play a little bit of both sides and i'm going to avoid this one uh for cash games for sure like i said i just don't know what's going to happen i'm picking marcos but i'm not confident there. just hoping for a good fight and hoping to see the skill set of one or both of these guys so i can get a better read on them going forward And here we've got one of my favorite fighters on the card, Renat Fakhradinov. $9,100 taking on Alessio Zaleski, $7,100. Zaleski's a very qualified UFC veteran. His numbers are awful, though. He's getting outpaced everywhere except at distance, but he's not even scoring two points per minute, averaging less than 80 points per win, not even a 100-point ceiling for Zaleski, 14% takedown accuracy, 66% takedown defense. Nurmagomedov took him down once, uh, Li Jing Lang took him down twice, and Ben and Wa San Denis, yes, that fight in which BSD got absolutely smashed in the second and third round, took down Zaleski two times, guys, and he was fighting at welterweight, and he is a natural lightweight, and even he was able to get Zaleski down. What do you think is going to happen when Zaleski fights Renat here? I would wager to guess that Renat would probably get a couple of takedowns here. Uh, I'm just going to go find a cash machine. And that's what we're betting on. His numbers are crazy. I'm not going to read all of them, guys. They're, they're absolutely insane. Um, averaging 122.7, gigantic ceiling, 98% uh, of all grappling time he's involved in, Renat controls, all three of his fights over 100 points, and two of those are 130, basically, 63% takedown defense, or offense, guys, 5.82 takedowns landed per 15 minutes, 14 average value, he is over his average salary, but only by about $300, so that's not terrible, and he has an okay strength of schedule, nothing compared to Zaleski's strength of schedule, which is one of the best on the entire card. So I am a little bit, you know, I want to temper my expectations here. Zaleski is definitely going to be one of the better fighters that uh, Renat has ever faced. He did fight Brian Battle, and Battle's done nothing but win since that fight. Uh, so that looks pretty good. But I think Zaleski is probably a bit more well-rounded. That said, I don't think he's going to be able to stop the takedowns. And even if he can get up, we're going to see rinse and repeat takedowns from Renat Fakhradinov. The last thing I will mention. Let me tell you something, Pandeo. Guys, what do we love for DraftKings? We love takedowns and we love ground and pound. I mean, we get every time somebody connects to somebody's face on the ground, we're getting 0.4 points each time. Boom, 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 boom. Renat lands 1.62 ground strikes per minute, which might not sound like a lot, but that number is good enough for second overall in the welterweight division, guys. He rains down ground and pound, and that's what I'm hoping to see here. Give me Renat in GPPs, in cash. Whatever the cost. Love him there. A little bit of 
Zaleski in GBPs, no Zaleski in cash, and uh, yeah, I'm siding with my guy Renat Fakhradinov. I'm excited to see what he can do here, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this fight. So love Renat in all formats. Let's keep it moving. Next, we've got Elves Brenner taking on short notice replacement Kanan Krzyzewski. Krzyzewski. Krzyzewski, don't call him Coach K. I don't know what to call him. Kr this is pointless. Okay. It's time for plan B. Krzyzewski is what we're going to call him. He does have a Dana White Contender Series fight, and he is making his UFC debut on Saturday. His numbers looked very good in that Dana White Contender Series fight. I mean, he got a first-round finish, sub finish, I should say, under three minutes, so his numbers kind of have to be thrown out. His strength of schedule over his last five is okay, towards bad at 67 even. Other than that, yeah, I'm kind of throwing all of his numbers out. He had no takedowns shot against him in that Dana White Contender Series fight, so there are a lot of things about Kanan's game that I am interested to see. However, I am on the side of Elves Brenner this week, 8,200. He was supposed to fight, I don't even, oh, Ribovich. Um, but as you know, DraftKings does not change their salaries once they come out with salaries. I don't know Kanon's salary currently. It's probably not 8,000. So what you're seeing on the screen is Ribovich's salary. I'm just now realizing I didn't check before I recorded this. You're not dealing with morons here. So I don't even know if his salary is out yet. Um, but Brenner remains at 8,200. I assume Kanon's going to be in the low sevens, somewhere around there so we have immediate value on Brenner just because his opponent you know he should be now 8800 8900 and here he sits at 82 add to that that he is one tough son of a bitch two fights in the UFC got the split uh split decision against Zubaira Tukagov in his debut and then smashed Gurum Kutadaladze in the third round he scored 101 points in that fight and looked fantastic that's fucking combat I mean, I'm excited to see what this kid can do. I am uh, definitely going to put him up against newcomer Kanon here on super, super short notice. So give me Brenner in all formats, cash. Uh, give me him in GPPs. Kanon, I'll have a little bit in GPPs, but I'm not playing him in cash at all. And I do not think he's going to win this fight. So give me Brenner for the win and for all formats. I'm hoping he comes out here and just gets it done and has has fun doing it. I think uh, we got a shoot to box guy here, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, Diego Lima shoot to box. So yeah, expect the blonde hair. Expect uh, expect a good fight, man, from, from Brenner, and I'm hoping he gets it done early. Here in the lightweight division, we have half of the Bonfim brothers that are fighting on this card. Ishmael Bonfim, 9,500. Woo! Taking on UFC veteran with one of the best mustaches in the UFC. Definitely top five. Vince Pichel, 6,700. I'm going to cut to the chase, guys. I like Pichel as a punt play this week. I think he's tough. Yes, he could obviously come out here and get finished uh, and finished early, but that is very rare when it comes to Vince Pichel. He's only been subbed once and KOT KO'd once in the UFC. He is 7-3, and three and he's coming in well under 1,600 under his average salary has a very good strength of schedule at almost 72 and inside the distance Vince Pichel does his best work however he's got a tough go ahead of him Ishmael Bonfim no joke 19 and 4 as a pro so he has been finished in four of his professional fights by submission but he's looked okay in the UFC so far beating Terrence McKinney in his UFC debut then losing to Benoit Saint-Denis which is a good loss as we all know Benoit Saint-Denis is uh apparently on another level very excited to see his next fight uh but I digress I love the numbers from Bonfim Theme. He put up over 100 in his one win over McKinney. Got a 13 value there. 76, almost 77 last five strength of schedule, which is very good for a guy that does not have a ton of UFC fights. So I'm looking forward to this one here. I don't mind Bonfim and GPPs, although I do think he is a bit overpriced. If I had to say, I think this one should be just a little bit more narrow, in my opinion. In fact, I'd rather play his brother at 9,300, which we'll get into shortly. But uh, I don't mind Ishmael Bonfim. I'm probably picking him for the win. But Vince Pichel, to get to those more expensive expensive guys you're gonna have to have some dumpster guys in there and I just mean that as far as price goes uh 6700 is gonna be easy to get to this week and I think Pichel could at least stretch this to a decision score 30 points maybe and uh you know give you some kind of something at the very bottom level of the salary no Mr. Lebowski it had not occurred to me that had not occurred to us dude so I don't mind him as a punt play in any format. And uh, yeah, I'm picking Bonfim though. Unfortunately, I love Vince Pichel and he is from hell, but uh, the pick's probably gonna be Bonfim. Although I do see a path for Pichel though. So we'll just have to see. We'll have to see what CM Monk picks at the end of the show and we will uh, go from there. Fight. 
Next fight, a very closely lined fight. 8,300 for Armin Petrosian, 7,900 for Hadolfo Vieta. I love the numbers from Vieta here. Very, very good. At distance, as you would expect, not so good, but inside the distance is where he is doing all of his work as he is known as the Black Belt Hunter. 100% takedown defense so far. Lands 3.7 takedowns of his own per 15 minutes. Two of his four wins over 100%, and he does control 86% of all grappling time he's involved in. A decent average value per win, but not where we'd want to see it at just 10.88. You'd like to see that at at least 12 minimum. Coming in almost $800 under his average salary, which is great. And his average ownership so far, 41%, guys. I don't think we're going to see that anywhere close to 41% this week. And he also has a very good strength of schedule at 73.66. Meanwhile, Armin Petrosian, while being a very good UFC fighter with a 3-1 and record, is shit for DraftKings. You have to use so many cuss words. The fuck are you talking about? Scores less than 80 points per win, guys. He put up six. Oh no, that, that's the wrong. That's uh, I'm still on Vince P. Shell. Oh, my whole thing froze up here. That that's why. Well, we're just gonna ignore that. Lost my train of thought here. Only gets 9.8 average value per win for Petrosian. 36% takedown defense, which isn't bad, but he does give up two and a quarter takedowns per 15 minutes, and he's only controlling 25 and a half percent of the grappling time. So this one seems pretty binary, as they say. Uh, Petrosian should win the battle on the feet. Vieta does not have terrible striking though so if if Vieta can get Petrosian down this is going to be a long night for Petrosian or a short one if he decides to get subbed so I'm actually picking the underdog here I don't have a ton of dogs on this card but I am picking the black belt hunter Adolfo Vieta uh, at 7900 this week picking him for the win playing him in all formats cash GPPs wherever I can get him because that's going to help me get some of those more expensive guys here so for a lower uh, for a mid-range underdog I should say definitely don't mind Adolfo Vieta and I will have some Petrosian probably in cheap PPs, but man, he is very hard to get to with that sub 80 DraftKings points per win. And he is very consistent there, right around 80 points in all three of his fights. It's not like one's at 60 and one's at 100, you know, something like that. We are very consistent for Petrosian. Uh, as you can see, when, when your ceiling is very close to your DraftKings points per win, as it is in this case, 81 and a half to 79.7, that means you're pretty consistent as far as your scoring goes. So uh, yeah, probably going to be avoiding Armin Petrosian because he does not score very well and give me a share or two of of Hadolfo Vieta to get it done inside the distance and score hopefully well for a $7,900 price tag. Here we have Kyle Bahayo, 9,200, taking on Abus Magomedov way down the salary list at 7K this week. Guys, this one is also, to me, pretty straightforward. We have an undefeated UFC fighter in Kyle Bahayo, 4-0, and we know what he's going to do. A lot of his numbers don't look great. He does not have the best average win, uh, average points, excuse me. Hello, do you speak English, sir? per win at 84.93 but he did kind of break out of his shell in his last fight against Michael Oleksajczyk scoring 107 points in that fight but before that it was 75 80 and 77 you could comp this one against Magomedov closest to probably Mahmoud Muradov who was a very good striker um Bahio did get the win there 75 points is what he scored only landed one takedown did control 37 percent of the fight time but uh Mahmoud Muradov controlled 32 percent of the fight time there so this one's going to be probably pretty simple here. Bahio, I'm probably, I don't know if I'm picking him to win, but we know what he's going to do. And Magomedov, we absolutely know what he's going to do. He's the striker. He's the guy that could land the head kick from out of nowhere. Um, if he doesn't get it done early, Magomedov, it's going to look really, really bad for him the rest of the fight. So condolences. I'm definitely playing Magomedov in GPPs, probably getting to a bit of him in cash only because he is so cheap. Um, and I do think the the fight against Strickland is is making him much cheaper than he, than he would be on average. Um, um, I probably think this one could be 8,800, 7,400, maybe even thinner than that if it was not for that Strickland fight uh, in which Abbas got finished, you know, in, in the second round. So I think we're getting him for a bit cheap here. I might be wrong, and Bahio could just come out here and, and just dominate him from a grappling perspective. Magomedov, you know, gets suffocated, scores no points, and Bahio wins, uh, you know, by sub or or decision scoring, you know, 80 to 90 points. So give me a little bit of Bahio maybe in cash, probably looking elsewhere in GPPs for the most part, although Magomedov Magomedov can be finished, so maybe I'll have a small share of Bahio and GPPs, but I think I'm picking the underdog here, going for the big tourneys in this one, going for the cash, like I said, for Magomedov, and that's just going to open up my options up top for sure. So I guess I'm going to I'm gonna go out on a limb, pick my second dog of the night, and I'm going to take Abus Magomedov here at 7K, and I will be able to get him in my lineups, opening up those spots for the higher salaried guys for sure.
fight. Not sure why this fight is happening again, but uh, Rodrigo Nascimento, $8,800 taking on Dante Maze at $7,400. The stats are pretty bad for both guys. As you can see, all of the red numbers, neither guy coming anywhere close to averaging triple digits. Uh, just the grappling numbers, as you would expect from Nascimento, are decent. Both guys have not great strength of schedules. I mean, what, what, what are we going to say here? We already saw this fight once. Nascimento outstruck Dante Maze by five strikes, 32 to 27. He landed two takedowns on Maze and controlled 33, almost 34% of the fight, but he got controlled for 22% of the fight by Maze. So ended up winning that fight, did Nascimento, and he scored 99.69 points there. I really don't think anything's going to change. He did sub Maze in the second round. I should say that. He subbed Maze at the seven minute mark. I have a feeling this one goes to decision. I think Maze might just be a little better than he was, you know, back in 2020. Uh, one would hope anyways. Yeah. Well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. So I think this one probably goes to decision. Neither guy scores very well. I'm going to be looking to fade it overall. I will have a little bit of both sides in GPPs, but when it comes to cash, I'm likely not targeting this fight. I'll be looking elsewhere for cash. Uh, like I said, for GPPs, I mean, I'm going to pick Nascimento straight up for the win, uh, but his price tag is, is, is a bit too high for me, especially with an average value of less than 10. 9.98, guys. You do not want to see that at all. Um, plus all the sixes in his last five strength of schedule. Can't be good, right? all those sixes that's what they say sixes are bad right you want sevens baby sevens where it's at yeah give me nasi mental for the win not looking forward to this fight for DraftKings, but i'll play a little bit of both sides like i said in gpps probably about the same amount just because of the price difference but uh yeah i'll be looking elsewhere to uh to, to get value i hope hopefully i don't miss out and somebody gets finished in the first round that would be awful co-main event of the evening the second half of the Bonfim brothers Gabriel Bonfim 9300 taking on the ever frustrating to play Nicholas Dalby at 69 <laughs> I mean what do we do with Nicholas Dalby he's he's the decision machine uh his one fight that he got finished in was I believe Jesse Ronson and that was overturned to a no contest because Ronson was on that good good fortunately I'm adhering to a pretty strict uh, drug uh, regimen to keep my mind you know uh, Limburg. But uh, yeah, what do you do with Nicholas Dalby? I mean, he scores like shit, 77 points. Doesn't even score three points a minute. His ceiling is 91. One of the, I forgot where my camera was. What do you need that for, dude? You've got to buck up, man. One of the lowest on the entire card. Nothing is standing out here except for his strength of schedule in his last five and the fact that he's almost $1,000 cheaper than his average salary, average va or average ownership rather, just 13%. So nobody's playing this guy and why would you? He doesn't do anything for DraftKings, none, zero percent of his six UFC wins, he has put up a hundred or more points. None of them. No round one finish wins or losses. He's just there to, to go to decision with. And most of the time he is winning. So what do we do with that against a young guy in Gabriel Bonfim? Uh, I should mention Dalby, almost 39 years old. In fact, he'll be 39 in uh, on the 16th of this month. He'll be 39. Uh, but yeah, what do we do with that against a, a young guy, very exciting, undefeated 15-0 fighter who looks like like a killer in the UFC. Yes, he's fought Munir Lazez and Trevin Giles, but you do with what you with what you can, right? You're not going to fight unless you're, you know, Sergey Pavlovich fighting Alistair Overeem in your first fight. You're not really going to be fighting top tier guys right off the bat. And he has done exactly what he's supposed to do against Trevin Giles and Munir Lazez. Finish them early and score extremely well. Those are all his numbers on the screen. 108 points per win, basically. 69... <laughs> percent grappling time controlled very good last five strength of schedule two first round finish wins throwing up subs left and right 9k average salary so he is a bit more expensive than that but i think it's worth it here guys i think dalby can get finished here although i don't necessarily think that's going to happen i think it can uh but i think bonfim can also win a decision so give me bonfim in cash give me some of him in gpps as well dalby not really a gpp play for me but i will have a few shares of him there just because he is a veteran and he's facing a young guy with only two UFC fights, not even, you know, barely two minutes total in the UFC octagon. In fact, it is uh, actually, yeah, two minutes, 2.04 minutes is uh, what he's been in the octagon for. So yeah, there is always that chance. So don't just cross out Dalby. I won't be playing him in cash probably, but in GPPs, I think he does deserve a few percentage points there. I don't know about 13%, but you know, maybe around there, but uh, the pick spawn theme, hoping he gets it done early. Would love to see Dalby uh, get finished here. Fight. 
main event of the evening, guys. Yelp now made a 9,600 most expensive fighter on the card, taking on the Black Beast, Derek Lewis, at 6,600. Bones or clams or whatever you call them. Yeah. Is there a more binary fight than this? I hate saying that, but that's a re is there? I don't think so. Yelp now made, I mean, look at his stats. He's one of the best DraftKings performers of the entire year. I can't wait to see to uh, break down his 2023. He's had two fights so far. Rosenstreich, 104.27 points, and Shamir. Emil Abdurakimov, 125 is what he scored there. So, uh, in fact, he was 96 and 9,700 in those fights, respectively. 5-0 and is Yeldon Almeida, and I mean, I'm not going to read off all these stats. He is somehow more expensive than his average salary, but just barely. It's basically the same. Four of his five UFC wins are first-round finishes, controls 100% of all grappling time he's involved in, and he has had two significant strikes landed on him. Two. It's him, dude. Two strikes landed on him in, uh, I don't even know, 22 minutes, basically. Abdurakimov landed one, and uh, the Pleasure Man, Anton Turkali, I'll give him props for once in my life, did land one strike on uh, on Yelton Almeida. Lewis's numbers are terrible. I call it the Lewis line for a reason. The dude scores, as of now, 1.95 points per minute overall. The Lewis line, I thought, was around two, but apparently it's still dropping, and we're now at 1.95. Laughable, man. <laughs> I would have. Scores 85 per win. Guys, you know what Lewis can do, right? He either does it early or he gets it done to him. Like, he either does it early or he's got nothing. Not a great cash play, if I could, if I should say so myself. I'm probably not playing too much of this in cash. Almeida is just too expensive. Although he could come out here and just get it, you know, just dominate 120, 125 points in a first round win. I will have a bit of him, but I'm not going to go crazy like I usually do in cash with him. GPPs, yes, I'm going to get him into some of my lineups, but again, I think he's a bit too expensive, and I think there is good value in the 9K range this week. Eduardo Mora is at 9,400. There's two Bonfims in the 9K range. Renat's at 91. So we've got some interesting uh, high-end guys and girls this week. So not sure how much I'm going to be able to get to, but I do think he scores well. I am obviously picking Almeida to get it done in the first round, probably by submission. But Lewis, you have to play in GPPs just because he's Derek Lewis. He could land that nuke at any time and completely turn your lights out. Darkness washed over the dude. And Almeida has never been tested yet. Danilo Marquez, Parker Porter, The Pleasure Man, Abdurakimov, and Yair Jair Rosenstreich. So Derek Lewis, very, very dangerous guy to fight. Uh, but if Almeida can avoid the the bomb early, then I think uh, this one's a wrap. So if he gets Lewis down at all, it's probably going to be a wrap. Even if Lewis ignores jujitsu and just stands up immediately, he's probably going to get taken back down. So it is going to be very fun to see Almeida pick Derek Lewis us up off the ground and put him on the ground so that that uh that will be a uh, very fun very good fight to see i can't wait to get to the main event this week and uh yeah the picks almeida i don't mind them for gpps or cash but i will be looking to uh save a little bit of salary overall before we get out of here let's throw it over to monk so he can tell us who the most owned no nonsense monk pick of the week is for ufc sao paulo and a good day to you sir Thank you, Monk. And the most owned, no-nonsense, or Monk pick of the week for UFC Sao Paulo, how could it not be? $9,100 Renat Fakhradinov, baby. You see in the picture what he did to Brian Battle. That's what we're going to see over and over again against Alezi Zaleski. Aleziu Zaleski. Too many Zs. We got the, you know, those are Zs. The, the Rizzuto, Rerudo rule is in effect here. Yeah, too many Zs. There's no way this guy can win. Oh, look at me. I'm rambling again. I already told you what Renat can do. Uh, he smashed Kevin Lee, ran through Brian Battle, 130 points. What else do you want to hear, man? I think he's going to be able to take Zaleski down. I think he's going to be able to either A, do it over and over again and rack up points to control time and ground and pound, number two in the division as far as ground and pound goes. Remember that, Renat Fakhradinov. Or he's going to he's going to take Zaleski down once and, and sub him out in the first round. So give me a ton of Renat Fakhradinov. He will officially be my most owned, no-nonsense pick of the week, the Monk pick of the week for UFC Sao Paulo. Before we get you out of here, let's throw it over to Monk so he can show you who CM Monk picked for UFC Sao Paulo. Thank you, Monk. Here are CM Monk's picks for UFC Sao Paulo. If you don't know, CM Monk is a thing that I built. Stands for Computer Monk and he picks fights based on stats and stats alone. Last week, he went 7 of 11, 63.64%. I personally, my picks went 9 of 11 for an 81.82%. It was a pretty easy week, pretty chalky week last week though. Overall, CM Monk year-to-date, 266 
at a 437 for a 60.87%. And me personally, I am at 61.78. Man versus machine, the machine remains in last place. Let's see what the machine picks this week. See amongst picks, Mark D. Casey, decision. Eduardo Moira by finish. Denise Gomes by decision. Vitor Petrino by finish. Renat Fakradinov by decision. Daniel Marcos, decision. Newcomer, Kanan Krzyzewski, I still can't say it, by decision. He's picking that based on the DWCS fight. I'm not picking Krzyzewski, that's for sure. Ismail Bonfim by finish. Adolfo Vieta, underdog pick by finish. Let's go. Kyle Bahayo by finish. Interesting. Dante Mays by finish. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Gabriel Bonfim by decision. And in our main event, Yeldon Almeida by finish. There you go. See you amongst picks for the week. Let's get you guys out of here. Well, that about does her. Wraps are all up. That is going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching Game Theory for UFC Sao Paulo, Almeida versus Lewis. I'm going to have a hell of a time watching this card. I think there are some great fights here. Great card to come back to after a week off. And we've got another good card next week. Only six cards left to finish out the year. So let's hope they are all good ones. And I don't see how this one uh, could fall short of that. So I'm very excited for it. Hope you guys are too. And I'd love to see your names at the top of the leaderboard this week. As usual, I want all of you to enjoy the fights. So enjoy and we will see you in the next one i love this stuff only come here if you like that stuff